side of us. You could, you could kind of see the thing moving through the woods. Uh, all I can remember is flipping the light on, and I see this creature, and I knew, I knew in my heart, I knew in my mind, in the whole night, that this isn't a man. And then this thing walks across the road, takes a turn towards us, and then leaps over a guardrail. Went to look forward, and there was a big black thing, is all I can call it. Welcome to Squatch DTV. Exploring the Bigfoot mystery each week with your hosts, veteran researcher, author, and TV personality, the Squatch Detective, Steve Culls. And from the Bigfoot Research Project of Kentucky, Chris Bennett. Sit back and buckle up as we bring you guests from around North America discussing the Bigfoot phenomena, but not without a few laughs, too. Here are your host, Steve and Chris. And good evening, Cyberspace. Welcome to Squatch DTV for today's date, February 14, 2021. Happy Valentine's Day, folks. I'm your host, your guide, the Squatch Detective, Steve Coles, along with that character right beneath me, Mr. Chris <laughs> Bennett. Hey, how you doing, Steve, man? Spreading the love today on Valentine's Day. That's right. And, of course, our our good friend here is also with us. Pass it down, Mr. Dave Wickham. How are you, sir? Doing great. Doing great. Waiting for the snuff. And you know what? We all have the same haircut. Well, that's happy. <laughs> we are saving the world by reducing shampoo use. We are. We, we hey, are. The, we the are joke reducing. Is we usually only buy, like, one bottle of shampoo each year, so. Well, we're also saving the carbon footprint from the electricity used for the, you know, the, the trimmers yes, you know, and, and that's at, right. at the barber shop. So, hey man, so that's uh, saving the world. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's do our roll call for tonight. The folks have checked in that said hello. Oh, yeah. We love to do that with our audience. Oh, there's a lot of people in here already. Hi guys. Yeah, it's booming. So we got Corey. Hello, Corey. Good evening. Hey, Corey. Mr. Cassidy. Good to see you. Pat, welcome. Of course. What evening of Squatch DTV would out would not be complete without B. Hello, B. Hi, B. Good to Mr. see you, Mr. Swan, sir. How are you, John? And we got Frank. Frank's on. Hey, Frank. Welcome, Low Rider. Good to see Low Rider. Low Rider. Mr. Mike. Yeah. Tactical, 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 Tactical Bigfoot Research. Hello, Michael. Judy. Good to see you. Hi, Judy. Welcome. And what's a, Mick is actually on time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Mick. Of course, our good friend, Mr. Charlie uh, Wonton himself. Charlie, welcome. welcome. And uh, we got Diane Trick. Hello, Diane. Good to see you. Hi, Diane. Of course, there's the, the lovely Sherry Lynn. Hi, Hello. Sherry. That, that's my boss. <laughs> Ken Collins, good to see you, Ken. And uh, so far, who else we got here? We got John. Good to see you, John. Hey, John. Welcome. And does he have a different fish on his picture every week? <laughs> I don't know. And we got Mark. Good to see you, Mark. Howdy, sir. Hey, Mark. 
Robin, our good friend from uh, up north. Welcome, Robin. And I uh, hope everything's uh, at least uh, warmer than it is here, uh, even though you guys are Canada or a little bit north. So, and of course, Jimmy. Hello, Jimmy. Welcome, Jimmy. So, boy, we uh, what what a show we got tonight. <sighs> um, so, uh, where do we start? Where do oh. we start? I'm so, excited though because we're supposed to have some like uh, New York weather here. I mean, it's supposed to be like a foot of snow in the next few days. So I'm excited to see it. You know, John, that's a that's not a bad idea. Like every week, change the fish. <laughs> you, know, just, you know, like you know, next week hold up like a swordfish or something. You know, or or just you know, Photoshop one in. Just have, have one in. <laughs> maybe one week a Godzilla. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that was a. Uh, um, that was a trout he was holding up. I think I, I I couldn't make it out real good. The well, old eyes aren't what they used to be. But. Like you know, that's what I do every year at Halloween. <laughs> John says I'll work on that. Uh, you know, I do every 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 uh, every Halloween. I claim to be illiterate, so it's trick or trout. So when kids show up at the door, I give them a fish. <laughs> no, they don't like that. No. Um. Well, you know, you get a lot of extra toilet paper, though. Just go out and gather it off the trees. <laughs> so, anyhow, anywho, um, uh, it's been a very interesting week. And uh, um, I, hang on a second. I'm oh, yeah. John said it's a brown trout. Yeah. The brown trout. So, anyway, um, uh, we didn't have a show last week because of Super Bowl. Um, what a disappointment. That was, you know, it was a good, you know. All right. Game was okay. You know, it wasn't one of those nail biters. Um, probably the best thing during the night was the streaker. That was kind of funny. And if you ever oh. heard the audio, if you heard the, the the radio broadcast, it was hysterical because the TV broadcast kind of didn't say nothing about it, and they went to commercial. Oh. But the guys on the radio called it like a play. Oh. I don't know if anybody heard that but they're like oh there's a streaker on the field he's at the 30 yard line up oh, he just juked the security guard now he's at the 20 the 10 oh he's down at the goal line as security <laughs> converges on him and, oh man and uh, it, it was totally hysterical <clears throat> people but, are the funniest creatures you know but uh, since that I, I i cut a couple of videos one was the uh, squatch stories episode three so for folks who haven't heard that you know give that a listen um, yeah, over on YouTube, yep. or yep, or a watch. Um, mm -hmm. Folks that are on our uh, on our audio replay, you know, when you when you have a chance, go visit it over at the YouTube channel. Um, but since uh, a, a couple of things happened uh, uh, last Thursday, uh, I put a debunking out of this alleged Bigfoot tooth that came out of. Um, Salt Fork allegedly came out of uh, Salt Fork State Park, and that's how kind of David and I started talking with one another. I said, "Dave, you know, you'd you'd be awesome to come on the show," and um, you know, we uh, uh, well, whatever it, it really picked up, and it, it went kind of uh, you know for us, it went kind of viral. It was you know creeping up on a thousand hits already, and it's just a few days old. So, and we also uh, you know we have a, a lot bigger uh, subscriber. We've picked up. I think 30 or so new subscribers uh, just great. over the last few days. And we want to welcome great. everybody there. And thanks for being here. And, and, and people's um, got to understand when, you know, when we get hits on a video or something, it's not because we've promoted it and spent $10,000 trying to make clickbait. No, no, no. We just uh, put a video out and people watch it. Great. <laughs> they don't yep. watch it. Well, no. that's why we need your help. Yep. Like, share, subscribe. That way, you know, it gets us more in the search better. And we've always said this uh, for folks yeah. who are new to the channel. We have the smartest audience. And not every show is for everybody. There'll be yeah. shows, you know, that we, we may be talking uh, not even necessarily about Bigfoot itself, but the Bigfoot community. Or we may be talking about uh, a, a breakdown of a hoax. Or tonight we're going to do a whole mishmash of things. We're not going to so much talk about necessarily the bigfoot community um and that's that's right can the whole tooth and nothing but the tooth uh, <laughs> oh man uh, and, and nick said uh, he wondered what a sasquatch would think about a human streaking through the forest he probably get a good laugh 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. And this is exactly what the Sasquatch would do. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, a little adult humor here and there. Uh, oh, and, man. Uh, you know, uh, we like playing the, uh, you know, every once in a while, we like to throw an Italian suppository at people. What is an Italian suppository, you ask? It's an innuendo. Hmm. Hey, it's innuendo. Anyway, um, all right, enough of the bad joke. Um, and uh, hello to Sarah. She just popped in. Hi, Sarah. And, oh, and of course, you know this character, Mr. Ed Weiland popped, popped in. Ed. <laughs> whoop, whoop, wahoo, taters is live. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, without, I guess we're going to put the cart before the horse, but you know, you've been doing research for how many years now, David? Uh, about uh, about nine years right now. Right. And uh, when, about a year or so, a little over a year, this guy, um, we do it outdoors, uh, came on the scene, hitting a place that, you know, is pretty much, you know, your primary area. You like to play it, and that's Salt Fork State Park. And, uh, well, describe what's been going on the last year. Well, I, I think... Uh, people uh we have our different groups and and you're always looking at youtube what's going on uh in the bigfoot world and this uh, video came on and i think it was like april and it was you know sasquatch at salt fork and uh sure enough i got about three or four people um you know uh, who not even in bigfoot uh, send me friends you know who kind of knew i'm in, in the, into it so it sent me the video so i finally stopped and looked at it and and I, it was, you know, talking about, you know, going there and, and find an area. I think they found bones and, and all of a sudden they found the elusive Bigfoot walking through Salt Fork and, and he played peekaboo behind a tree. And, and I watched the video cause I'm always hopeful. I, I want it in my lifetime to be able to say, yes, we, we, we prove it or we have the proof to, to say that it actually exists. And, and so forth again it's a area that i have researched uh, many many times and uh the, the what happened was he was I hey fruit. david uh i think something's going on with your audio there you hear me now okay yeah you we got you now yep all right um the uh we're going on and things were going on with the um the video and i watched it and i was like oh my gosh you can't believe, I can't believe this It's a guy in a suit. Um, and, and I'd say that in, in the references that I'm a physical therapist, been doing it for about 28 years. So I, uh, have a really good grasp on human gait and components of cadence and steppage and weight shifting. And, and I'm watching a guy. Walk. And so, so when we posted the video, uh, he, um, put out the video he's doing a whole bunch of groups and then he's like oh, check this out. and he got into a bunch of groups that created some dialogue and a lot of people uh, i mean it was actually it was 50 50 i hate to I hate to say it but it's 50 50 people say oh it's a hoax and other people are like oh my gosh that's amazing so i mean people like you and and i you know, anytime i had a chance i got on there and said guys this is you know a human walking it's not it's not fast it's it actually, during one of the steps, it stepped over a log and almost lost its balance and did a reflex to keep itself from falling. And um, uh, I've had an opportunity uh, once to be in the woods in an area that we had some activity. And me and another gentleman, uh, Bo, was uh, was following something that was very large and bipedal. And I can pretty much say it was bipedal. It wasn't I've hunted. It's not a deer prance or hopping or whatnot. And it sounded like uh, a linebacker going through the woods. And it was faster than what we could do with our night vision. We couldn't keep up with it. It was just boom, 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 boom. And yeah. it, it was, it was, a, it was a, a you know, freight train going through the woods. And this uh, video, this subject was not a freight train. <laughs> it, was, it was like someone walking home from a, 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 an evening at a bar. And he um, was more like a train wreck. Yeah, a train wreck. And I feel bad, but uh, a lot of the people, you know, started arguing with him and the gentleman decided to argue back. And uh, it depend on how rude they got, he got, he kind of reflected back. And I was like, well, you know, all right. So uh, I kind of kept it as a back 
you know, in my back thing. But the the bad part was uh, it got it went viral. The newspaper got it. The t it must have been a really uh, slow news day that day. But the uh, TV got it. I think it went all the way to Australia, as in a a, a storyline. You know, Bigfoot found or videotaped, and he got lots of uh, hits, lots of fame uh, off of that. And uh, I even uh, tweeted him a little bit later. Uh, me and some friends, uh, uh, Dave Webster and uh, Jack Warren and uh, Brian Dework from Indiana, uh, we had went Salt Fork for a weekend to do some uh, research on our on our areas that we've hit before and. Um, we was camping there and this was right before the big COVID stuff really started hitting. And we had a group of four guys from college that had watched the video they thought was real and decided to come that weekend to, uh, go squatching. And so we had a chance to sit down and we showed them some of our equipment. And I actually, we actually casted a couple of footprints out in the woods that we found that were, were kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And came back to the uh, fire and showed them. And it was really nice for us to have that opportunity. And so I kind of said, hey, here's a picture. I don't really believe in your video, but uh, you did, you know, this. these guys got out of their city and came down here and camped. So it was a windfall for the park. I mean, the park got some more hits. Uh, the I know I talked to the naturalist, uh, John Hickenbottom, and you know they, they got some phone calls from the higher ups. Hey, this is hitting the news. What are we going to do about it to capitalize on this, at least, you know, uh, two minutes of, of fame. Mm. So it, it, it did help the park, you know, uh, for the inquiries and maybe even actually some extra campers. But uh, after that, I was just like, forget it. And, but yeah, he came out with a bunch of other videos and I, I just <sighs> shook my head. Well, as we see it, uh, you know, a hoaxer, a lot of times will jump the shark. And I think with this Bigfoot tooth, I, I mean, it was pretty condemning with this this uh, alleged DNA report. Because all of a sudden, I, I started getting on my wires, hey, you know anything about this DNA report, about this tooth? And, uh, you know, I had, I had a look for, oh, this guy, okay. And, you know, I, I've seen the, uh, and of course, there are times when I see a serial hoaxer come out, when they first come out, they put something out there. Okay, it's kind of weak. I'm, I'm not going to get it yet. And, you know, he had the trail cam video, which was a blatant, you know, he had that still photo of it in there, which was blatantly a costume. We've seen that costume before. And then a little while later, he has this video with tracks, this trackway. And the stride on it is nothing major. It, it looks like it was just somebody just put a pair of stompers on and walked around. And they were in snow to begin with. And you know my feelings on snow tracks a lot of times, mm. uh, for those who don't know. Um, I don't put much stock in snow tracks. Yep. Um, uh, especially if they're sitting around. Um, uh, uh, um, and um, j just so you know, Tack asked, because Tack uh, is over on the western part of New York State. He was just wondering what part of Ohio. And you're in the southern Ohio area. Southeast uh, Ohio, Coshocton County. Yep. So that would be probably what about four hours to uh, Lake Western New York. Um, yeah, I would say we <coughs> uh, Jersey a couple times, so about four to six hours. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's probably six to Jersey, and um, <laughs> I I have this meme on my phone that I throw out there every once in a while as of uh, Washington crossing the Delaware, and the quote under it says, "One is not simply." Enter Jersey, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, New Jersey gets a bad rap. So. I like, I like, I like Jersey. Good looking state. <laughs> you haven't been to North Jersey. Ooh, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it uh, is. It's a pretty state. I mean, you know, uh, people from New York City, you know, they're like, ah, you live in Jersey, ah, you know. Oh man, Jersey's fine. It looks nice. Uh, quick way asked if we've seen the Ontario photos floating around. Nope, haven't. Uh, I think I know what he's talking about. I may have seen it, but I really haven't had time to delve into them. Uh, is that the one that where it's way off? Uh, they, they think it's on the side of a mountain, but I it doesn't I, seem like to ever move. And the guy, the camera said, Oh, look, it's moving. Well, I didn't see it moving. <laughs> <laughs> I look, don't know. It's moving. Uh, where? I, 
I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, so, but you see, Ken, here's the, here's the point. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and talking about the, mm. you know, Prince, you know, the video spoke a lot and I let that speak for itself because we, you know, obviously as a costume, he's going to lose people there when it goes into this track way. I'm not going to jump in and say, Hey, the stride looks a little long or it looks a little short for a Sasquatch because what's going to happen. Well, how do you know the Sasquatch maybe was taking a half foot or, you know, so, you know, okay. I really, I, I have my gut feeling on it, but dot, dot, dot. We, uh, we have to, um, you know, we have to wait for the, the moment. And uh, actually, it did happen. And uh, I'm going to pull up the video that I put out. And then we'll, see, we'll take a look. Um, and this is really cool now because we have um, this new way of moving along into the video. Um, new feature. Yeah. yeah, new feature. So so this itself is the two oh. here. Yeah. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it up a little bit. And uh, I'll let this play a little bit so people get a better understanding if they haven't seen the video. Take a look at it real quick and see if there's any validity to it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is look at a few screenshots from their video. Uh, you'll find it and We Do It Outdoors. The first picture we have is the side view of the tooth. Looks pretty enormous. The uh, second picture we have is the overhead view of the tooth. Now, if, if anybody wants to jump in, just say so. You know, uh, because I can stop this and we can talk over it. That's the beautiful thing about this. We can actually talk as it plays as well. Really cool new feature. So <clears throat> here, here's the interesting thing. Well, I'll talk about it. It doesn't necessarily bit. look rectangular, um, which our primate teeth are, are kind of squarish. Next, we have what appears to be some sort of DNA collection. As you can see, the collection tube is sitting on the table underneath. He's wearing gloves and he's inserting a stick into the tooth. And finally, we have a copy of the DNA letter he supposedly or they supposedly received. So we began to look at some other teeth and see if there's a comparison maybe. It was suggested that perhaps it was a bovine tooth, which it doesn't really appear to be a bovine tooth. But we looked at some other teeth, such as a bear tooth and teeth amongst primates and humans and the apes. And finally, even a Gigantopithecus tooth. And it just appears that, you know, it could be any tooth. It could even be fabricated. Really, I don't see anything like that. Now, people would say, hey, wait a minute, that that could exactly be why it could be a Bigfoot tooth, because it looks like none of these. So let's put that to the back burner. Let's go to the meat of the matter, which is going to really... Now, that there is, uh, I found that actually, this was auctioned off. It's actually a Gigantopithic Gigantopithecus molar. Mm -hmm. And it's not as large as one would think. Right. You know, um, but as you can tell, and one of the things I, I noticed in all of your primate teeth, they have a, they're very rectangular, almost squarish in some cases, mm -hmm. right? Whereas this tooth, uh, that he was using was, uh, yeah. ver, you know, very roundish. So yeah. to me, it doesn't, you know, could it be a real tooth? Maybe, um, the side view, uh, kind of leads me to believe it may be a tooth, because, you know, if anybody has seen a, a decaying tooth or had a tooth mm. pulled, you know, you this discoloration in it and stuff, you know, and these little flecks, you know, I don't think this is a manufactured tooth. I really don't. I think this may be, a, may be pulled from, you know, apparently he does some taxidermy from what I understand. I don't know if that's true, David. He has a, a custom bait shop. He makes custom lures for fishing. Okay. So, oh wait a minute! <laughs> yeah. So he's used to casting with like resins yeah. and stuff. Wow. Maybe, yeah, exactly. That's interesting. So, yep. So, um, yeah. uh, I, I wanted to say a cow tooth when I first seen it, but uh, the root is a uh, pretty long. Yeah. And uh, uh -huh. but you know when they're showing that picture, if we can. Uh, whether well, they're checking or they're gathering DNA from the tooth. Okay. Well, hang, hang Man, on. Man, that's completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going we're gonna to get into that. So, okay. okay. Let's go to the meat of the matter, which is going to really either prove this to be something authentic or prove this to be something hoaxed. The first couple of captures with this tooth, they're being handled with a gloveless hand. And we all know with, you know, DNA contamination, how, you know, this thing is reporting, oh, it's 99 to 97% human. Well, it's being handled by a human hand. How much? that is contamination if this indeed is really a genuine DNA report. 
Okay, so now we have this slide here with, that is a screen cap of the DNA collection using this small dowel, best I can describe it, and this tube. Problem is, if you have the tube, why aren't you using a buckle swab? Uh, this will not collect DNA correctly. Who knows if it's even sterile? So, to me, this is just for show. Now, see, here is something very interesting. He's actually using a, a dowel, and, and that is using crafting stuff. Mm -hmm. um yeah so and that is not meant for dna collection um, right the, bu the buckle swabs um the buckle swabs are meant to uh you know they're they're made specially that they actually attract those particles of dna yeah yeah so so this is well, completely irregular um yes chris a point here though mm -hmm. if you're collecting dna from a tooth you do not rub on the outside of the tooth with a swab or something other and say, oh, yeah, you're going to get whatever DNA was laying on the tooth from the environment. What you do is you drill a hole into the pulp of the tooth and then you collect DNA from inside that area. That is where you that is how you get yeah. DNA from a tooth. Right. And from the looks of it, the tooth already has been rotted out. So the pulp yep. would have been gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course it shows him allegedly cleaning tooth decay out. It kind of looks like just dirt. Yeah. And and supposedly that was sent in, but that, that makes no sense at all the way it's being collected. With the current COVID uh, testing, you would have thought that they would have picked uh, better props. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mask or something. Um, you know, there, there is a tube, but who knows that, that can, you know, he may have, I always say this, he probably he maybe had a home DNA kit and he just used that tube as a prop, you know, behind. Didn't want to use the actual buckle swab that comes with the tooth because you need that for your DNA or perhaps he already mm -hmm. used it. I, I, you know, to me, it's baffling that, you know, and very clear that this is not meant. Um, yeah. Yeah. Terry says the fake tooth needs a filling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't That's got a heck of a cavity in there. I bet that was aching. Except maybe the wearing of the gloves. So let's this, take a look at the DNA report. Probably the most revealing of this entire video. Now, let me just say this. for If anybody believes this, uh, you know, oh, well, look at this DNA. They need to be, you know, they need to be, you know, shook into reality. First of all, the DNA letter has the laboratory name allegedly scratched out, the name of the doctor scratched out, citing an NDA. Hey, listen, folks, when you send your DNA to a lab, they don't require you to sign an NDA. Another thing is, what lab sends a report out or what agency ever sends a report out, whether it be a lab report, a DNA report, whatever, without the company's logo on it? Next, let's look at the improper capitalization in this document. This occurs seven times throughout the entire piece of paper. The word conducted is capitalized, and it's the last word in the sentence. Next, we have the word dental pulp, where dental is capitalized, but pulp is not. In the very next sentence, dental and pulp are capitalized. You know, and it seems to be very common. Anytime this guy mentions a term, he's capitalizing it. Tooth decay, tooth being capitalized. Dentine, which by the way, dentine is actually the English pronunciation and spelling of the word Denton. That's the way we say that in the United States. So that in itself is kind of bizarre. The other interesting thing in this report is there are several instances where the DNA report says the DNA test reveals that the sample has been determined to be dentine or the sample has been determined to be a tooth enamel or the, the sample has been determined to be tooth decay. DNA tests don't determine any of that. They determine genetic sequencing, not what the actual substance is. DNA can come from hair, blood, brain matter, bone, whatever, teeth, but the DNA test doesn't reveal what the type of matter is that's tested. Now, if you notice in the last example, there are certain terms that are used in this document that are copied directly from the web. Yeah, it's amazing. I took, I took some actual snippets from there that sounded kind of, you know, and of course, boom, I found, you know, you put them in Google search and hey, there's the website it came from. Boom. Yeah. And that happened a couple of times. Um, and even like the previous example, this was one. I mean, this sample came directly from, uh, you know, uh, yourgenome.org. The other one uh, came from, actually, it wasn't uh, medlineplus.com. It was medlineplus.gov. 
um, actually came from a government. And you can see he just omitted um, the bacteria. They just omitted that. And tooth decay is damaged. I thought that was kind of a weird tooth can take, you know, I thought this was kind of a weird saying as tooth decay can lead to cavities, you know, dental caries, which is holes in your teeth. And I'm like, that's kind of weird in a way of saying it, but <laughs> there it was. Um, so we, we found the source of that. Um, and directly so, from the web in this from medicineplus.com verbatim word by word with the exception it comes from your genome.org directly from it's the first sentence word for word and the last big flag of this dna report it says the sample is determined the dna contains between 97 percent to 99 percent human dna the specific dna match is unknown to any records in the international database international database there is no international database you know a legitimate geneticist would use the term in known databases or likely a term would be like GenBank. they wouldn't Gen say in the international database like there is one there isn't one there are many and there are several very accepted ones GenBank being the largest so anyway that really proves to me that whoever wrote this was not a geneticist to me it looks like somebody who perhaps just graduated middle school wrote this and just used <laughs> Wikipedia to help them along. Finally, we have to remember that We Do It Outdoors also has a feature channel called My Stupid Humor. Not only that, but they actually came out with this crappy picture of a... And this is the photo, there's no photo on there of their... Um, we've seen this costume many times before. Now, so I, Bigfoot. I, I think that kind of wraps it. So I just want... So, but here's the interesting thing. Um, yeah, and we, we've talked about this on in the show before and, um, let me, let me throw this out there too, but I believe, uh, Bigfoot and Beyond podcast with, uh, Cliff Barrickman and, uh, Bobo Fay. um, I'll be on it, I believe tomorrow night. So, uh, we, we recorded that a few days ago, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, we, we, we talked a little bit about this too, about, you know, the, the guy is such a narcissist. Um, and I, I wanted to pull this up is he did respond to it. The, he actually put a response up and he said, the logo is on it and blurred out. <laughs> no, this is a dumbed down version of the full eight page report. <laughs> really? Wait a minute. You got a dumbed down report? Well, this is pretty dumb. <laughs> That's one of my thoughts. I requested the NDA for both parties involved. Huh? Why would you request a lab, you know, and, and, and not hide the lab? And you know what the answer was to that? Mm. Because you people will harass and harangue them and yada, yada, yada. And that's why I won't release the eight-page report because people like you, the haters, you know, <coughs> um, this is the, the type skeptics. <laughs> no, not even that. What it is, it, it, it's a number of things. And, I, and I, I'm going to, uh, uh, let me just, I'm going to pull this up on, uh, on uh, I don't know if it's going to pull up over here. Um, I'm going to pull this up here in a second because I think it's pretty interesting, the response that I wrote here. Um, but anyway, um, what I did was, is I baited him. Uh, because when you deal with a personality like that, he obviously was not going to answer any questions about it. Mm. He 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 was picking on things like, oh, uh, the the logo. There was a logo on it. It's blurred out. Well, it doesn't look like blurring to me. It looks like somebody took a piece of paper and you know crayoned over it or something. Yeah. Um. The other uh, the other uh, kick on it too is he talks about the NDA and stuff, and he's not hitting the real issues with it. Like the uh, he did mention. Oh, well, uh, you know, if you look, I was getting the stuff out of, the, I, you know, I was getting the stuff out of the middle of the tooth and yeah, no kidding, but you're not, you're not answering to the, you know, the actual points of the thing. And, you know, eventually it turned into, oh, well, you're just jealous. <laughs> and for folks who don't know, uh, you know, if you try to debunk something, um, you know, and I'm sure David, he probably told you, you were jealous as well. Well, no, he sent me a private message saying am I trying to get him and his family and his kids uh, beat up. And uh, I got mentioned with Doug, uh, Doug Waller from Sauceby and uh, Matt Moneymaker uh, from uh, uh, the BFRO. He's like, uh, you guys are, 
I'm calling the police on you and asking and sending um, the FBI <laughs> to you. And um, it, it was kind of, uh, I'm like, what? You know, I, I get to you know, tell me, you know, you're going to threaten me. And he took a, a picture of, of my work uh, Facebook page and just to kind of, you know, you know, and he knows where I work and I'm like, fine. <laughs> okay. So he pulls this big jealousy card on me because he said, you know, I, you know, um, you know, because he was on paranormal caught on, you know, caught on tape. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this was my official response. Your assumption is almost as big as a hoax as your DNA report. Like giving me, like myself giving me likes. He was very, very hung up on all the likes you get. You know how many? You know he was hung up on all this number stuff. In fact, uh, I'm going to explain his response to this letter because I, I don't have it. I may have it here, but I think it's on my phone, so I won't able to put it up there. But uh, he says it's amazing how none of these accounts have any content. You see. Uh, I'm talking about the the, the sock accounts that were commenting. Uh, after he commented, I fired back, and then uh, uh, <laughs> quick witty. Lots of people, lots of jealous, lots of people jealous of how to hunt. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so I, I'm not. See, I love that too because if I don't like how to hunt, oh, you're just jealous. Okay, I'm jealous, and I'll explain why, and, and this this will break it down. Um, you have stated what your sock accounts just said, too. I'm jealous. By the way, it's something every hoaxer says, too. And mind you that, quick witty. if people, if, if you're just spoofing what, what How to Hunt says, just understand, every hoaxer says this. You're just jealous, you know. And it says, you and other hoaxers are, no, you and other hoaxers are the jealous ones. That's why you hoax. The reason the hoaxers are really the jealous one, I think how to hunt the same way. He had a sighting, but all of a sudden, his couple of years being around, you know, Bigfoot, he knows everything, writing a book, all this other stuff. But this is not about him. This is about we do it outdoors. They do it to skip the line to get yourself on TV or YouTube hits and likes and subs, which is why you and your sock accounts seem so focused on it. And you do it without, and they do it without putting in the work. We have all here put in the work, but let me, let me, uh, let me go on. Perhaps there's a psychological need for them to feel important. Getting back to the jealous thing. See, and then I talk about myself. See, I've been on five different networks over seven different countries in the last 13 years. I've been on national new, on a national news show, all three local network news shows, quoted in print in over 200 newspapers worldwide. And guess what? They all came to me. I didn't seek them out. I, I put in the work, honestly. I'm also the author of three books, a lecture. I have had legit sightings. So spare me the bullshit that I am jealous. He's unlike jealous, the Steve. He's jealous. unlike the way you get on paranormal caught on tape by submitting your video, you had your three minutes of fame by being on the same program as a couple of other hoaxers, one being the Squatch Master, uh -oh. which also tells me they will put anything on. Congratulations. I'm so jealous. LOL. Guess what? If I was a jealous person, I'd be going after somebody a, bit, a lot higher on the food chain than you. I go, you also, <laughs> you also hurt legitimate wishes by your silly games. Sleep on that. As for what I stated was fact, fact, miscapitalizations, fact, reports only report, report, DNA reports only report on genome sequences. Fact, there is no one international database as the report suggests. Fact, things in the report were copied directly from the web. Fact, the word dentine is used. That's a UK term. The US term is dentin. From those facts, I have made a decision, just like a juror, your DNA report is fake. So, and guess what? If all you can do is name call, guess what? You have nothing to argue on. Give it up or move on. Yeah. So that was either, that was my response. See, when, when and I had had, I'm like, you know what? I'm sick of this. Deal. I'm just going to call out. You know what? What have I got to be jealous on? I'm still getting on TV. I'm still in documentaries. I didn't even comment the number of documentaries I've done. I've been in. I'm. <clears throat> I just did a documentary. Uh, I'm going to be on the Small Town Monsters documentary uh, 
uh, on the trail of Bigfoot, uh, the journey. Um, uh, I got something else brewing. So, I mean, it's like, um, not really jealous. Well, um, and, and the other part it, it, for the, uh, like independent researchers like me and some of my friends and other small groups, when we go to places like Salt Fork and we are trying to do legitimate uh, research in the area, it, 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 uh, it creates a little snicker because there's some people with common sense who, who doesn't necessarily follow or care about Facebook, but they see that as doing they think the best that, that uh, YouTube has and they just shake their head. You know, that doesn't help us out at, at all. Um, yeah, exactly. Yep. Chris, you okay? Yeah, I am getting my dog's bribes. <laughs> <laughs> See, and, and Mick says he's jealous of anyone who can survive eating his ex's meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was also trying to do some, uh, uh, see if I could find a, a picture of that uh, tooth uh, that would match up with something. And, you know, I can't really find check anything. A, check uh, a camel tooth. Check a camel tooth. Yeah. Um, with a... Uh, <laughs> looks like it's been worked on, so it could have been. Uh... But you know what? Here's the thing: uh, we can sit there and beat our head, and I mean, let's face it: if we think a picture is BS or we're unsure of it, what do we go? We go to the other, the facts around it. Yeah, that's where we should always lead. Doesn't matter mm -hmm. because you know what? Pictures can always be argued. We're not dentists. We're not right. experts in that that field, but what we are <laughs> very well versed in is DNA reports or looking at things that have. Uh, and, you know, uh, these anomalies to it, like the misspellings or the miscapitalizations in the document that yeah. that screams loud. And I didn't mean to take so much time on this, but it's very important that I say this, that hoaxers are the ones that shortcut. If you think about it, if people think that, you know, how are these guys being around for one or two years, all of a sudden, boom, they're getting a fame and they know so much because mm. they're full of it. They are full of it. They have not put the work in. People like David, who's been, you know, doing this for years, very quietly under the radar. People like Chris. I mean, if he would, you know, if we didn't do the show, nobody would know us. Um, they, they would be long forgotten. You know, you're only good as your last, you know, uh, piece of evidence or your, you know, last documentary or whatever. Um, I actually, I did check out a hippo tooth, Ken. <laughs> um, Well, uh, since this guy was like in the, the fishing bait, you know, business or hobby, yeah. whatever, uh, you know, casting and stuff is, is not out of the question. So it could be fabricated or it could be a real tooth that's been worked on and uh, kind of changed a little bit. Someone mentioned on one of the lot. It could be like a bone that's carved. So he could have gotten mm -hmm. like a cow <laughs> that and Very true. Um, yes. And like I say, we can, we can, you know, knock ourselves in the head all day long trying to figure out, you know, what that is, but <laughs> you look at the DNA report. So his response, he did come out with a response to this uh, and it was something along the lines. Well, you know what? I don't, you know, Bigfoot is just my hobby, you know, and oh, by the way, I, they came to me. No, they didn't. <laughs> Paranormal caught on tape did not come to you. You have to submit it. They don't ever track down anything. They yeah. have enough coming in their email box all the time. Um, and uh, if they did come to you, just offer up the proof. But you're not about offering any proof. Um, what I see is that even on his lawn service. Um, oh, he also made this big comment. You know, I. I have my own business. I make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. And, you know, you know, <laughs> dude. You're just showing how narcissistic or, you know, what you think is trying to hurt my feelings. That actually would hurt his feelings. That's why he's only, you know, self-reflecting, you know, to him, to him. Uh, oh, my God, the guy makes more money than I do. Oh, you know, that's him. And, and that's something a hoaxer will do, because guess what? We've seen Rick Dyer do that. <laughs> We've seen uh, the guy from Frisco, Mr. Oh, yeah. Snapple himself, do yeah. that. Right. He just yeah. falls in line with the rest of the hoaxers. And uh, and that's it. You know, it's his own world. And uh, from the looks of it, uh, you know, um, your nickname is Taters. Yeah. His nickname is Naders. And it looks like Naders 
could probably <laughs> use maybe some Nutrisystem or maybe the Slim Fast diet or, you know, at least get on a treadmill once every five minutes. Because if you're mowing lawns, like you say you're mowing lawns, oh, that's right. You use sitting mowers and it tells. You can tell. He doesn't use push mowers. So anyway, I'm going to get off this and we'll get yeah. uh, back to our back to our topic zero turn <laughs> back to our topic um but yeah. you know, I, I, I i have a push mower too it hadn't been started in about eight years so i guess it probably won't run now but i don't know i don't care <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and and uh you know it's, it's it's unfortunate that a person like that um you know actually uh um well, that the DNA report was very troubling. Re report. <laughs> but Steve, I really appreciate you putting all that together because uh, I think I, every time I saw something, I was posting, you know, uh, interactions and what this guy was doing and trying to get, you know, the newbies were looking at uh, and the groups were, oh my gosh, if you guys seen this latest uh, video. Mm -hmm. And we're just like a whole bunch of us just shaking our head. And it's like, you know, fist palm, you know, palm the head. And it's like, oh, no, not another one. So um, I really appreciate you putting, taking the time and putting okay. that together. And, and it, it, it all follows very true, you know, and, 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 you know, like I said, Guy Edwards came out with the, the four characteristics of a Bigfoot hoax. Um. And we have a question from Tom Steenberg, which we'll get to in a second. But guy, guy would always say that you know, delay of evidence, and uh, you know, of course they 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 put out their evidence, uh, but they attack the attack the, the critics, attack the the debunkers, um, and then claim you're the victim, you know, and, and that's what he did with your case. Oh, you're you know you're you know, and that's what he tried to do with me, but I turned it. I you know, unfortunately, he didn't know who he was dealing with. You know, that yeah. may work for, for John Q. Public. That may work. Say, hey, oh, David, you're just jealous. You know, yeah. you know, well, what are you going to say? No, I'm not. You know, you know, I don't really care to do that. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. All right. But I turn around. I actually have a lot of things that he psychologically he is jealous of. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I turned on. I said, well, let me just tell you who you're dealing with. <laughs> I'm jealous. Well, well, I've done this, 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 and this. I'm not jealous. Trust me. And, and with that, he lost it. And then, you know, he, you know, he became a little profane um, after he made the comment about making. And then I said, you know what? You can no longer comment on this channel. Boom. And wiped out all his other posts. If, and I told him, if you're not going to answer the questions, either answer the questions or address the issues or give it up. So that's well, what happened. And if you're going to have a piece of evidence that's going to be something good, like a tooth, and you have a DNA uh, test and report uh, comes mm -hmm. back on it, you want all that information out. Why would you want to be secretive? Here you go, baby. Why would you want to be secretive about anything like that? This is what the DNA analysis says. This is where the uh, they did the analysis. If you got a problem with it, contact them. <laughs> and uh, our good friend Tom Steenberg, sir. Um, yep. you, uh, want to know, has David done any work with Don Keating over the years? Well, the, that's uh, interesting because there's a, there's like the beginning and then where we're at currently. Uh, when I grew up, uh, I was just down the road from uh, New Cumberstown where Don was doing a lot of his research in the uh, Sasquatch Triangle. And uh, I was growing up and I, you know, I'm 50 years old. So I was into, you know, in search of and, you know, the Bonic Man and Bigfoot and Mysterious Monsters and reading all kinds of books. And, and in a newspaper, the Daily Jeffersonian, they'd have, hey, Don Keating's having a um, Bigfoot meeting. And so I'd be like, Dad, Dad, I want to go. I want to go. And Dad's like, you know, no, nah, we're, we're not going into Cumberstown for a Bigfoot meeting. So now I get to have a chance um, through uh, my friend Amy Boo uh, to kind of uh, have a dinner with uh, in, uh, in Coshocton nearby. Uh, I live about uh, 30 minutes, 20 minutes away from Newcomerstown. And we just kind of chatted about some stuff and, and got to know him. And I, I felt kind of weird because I grew up with him being, you know, the godfather of Ohio Bigfooting. And I, I didn't know how to, I want to say, approach talking to him. And he basically just said, you know, 
I'm kind of out Bigfoot. I, I kind of had been burnt by friends and researchers, and I'm just not into it. But, you know, if you just treat me like a normal person and just, you know, um, interact, he says, maybe we'll, 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 we'll talk about Bigfoot every once in a while. And so uh, I had an opportunity. I, I tried to look and see what he liked doing. And, and Don Keating is a, is a mad bowler. He loves to bowl. So I spent a couple, uh, four or five weekends going uh, Sunday, meeting him at a bowling alley, and we bowled. And you got to a point where you're snickering or trying to, you know, uh, throw the person off. And finally, you know, after a while, we, he was able to start sharing some Bigfoot information. So uh, I haven't been out in the field with him. but I've, I've been very blessed in the last uh, probably two or three months to be able to, to call him up and, hey, I'm uh, looking at the, the knowledge that he has in his head and the stories that he can relate with his investigations just, just really off the tongue it's amazing yeah i and now i have one very important question um did uh did don uh break 200 while he was bowling uh <laughs> no no that's confidential we, we don't want to know we're, we're just, Actually, he, he's, uh, improved his score he's bowling uh, close to 600 right now i mean he, he'll have a uh, 190 200 uh pin games and i i was bowling as good as i could do i was doing 150 and I, I was pretty happy with that and he was at 180 and he was uh, he was literally upset that he would miss you know a spare or something like that or pickups and well so he's a competitor. He's still, even to this day, he's a competitor. And I, that uh, is a hobby that is dying too. People don't bowl near near as much as they used to, and it's right. fun. If people, if, if you've never tried it, anybody out there, try it. It is fun. It's such a good stress relief. If, if there's you grab one that thing ball, I've, yeah, you uh, grab that ball and. <laughs> if, if there's one thing I've learned, if there's one thing I've learned. My bowling score looks more like a golf score, and my golf score looks more like a bowling score. <laughs> but I, I couldn't, I couldn't beat him if he spotted me thirty pins. I mean, I was, and I was even trying to, you know, to yell or whistle or something, cheat a little bit, and he still was beating me. So, All right. my, my next question is, how much money did you lose on the game? <laughs> <laughs> We didn't bet, but it, there was some there was some pride in it. I was and I was uh, it was a challenge to be honest, and I couldn't I couldn't keep him. Yeah, Keating gave up Bigfoot to be a bowling shark. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to have some fun. But, but uh, uh, that, okay, so that kind of led, led us to that point where uh, you know I was thinking about uh, uh, having a conference and. Uh, I, I approached him on the idea of, of maybe wanting to speak. Uh, I know that he had been out of it for a while. And uh, what's really good is some of his books that I've read uh, is had some tidbits of truth to the areas that I was researching. And uh, I really kept uh, tabs of that. And, and I just approached him and, and I kind of took a week or so. But uh, finally, I think he, he was uh, interested in the idea. Nice, nice, very nice. And I see that the uh, the conference you, you have done, you have Shane Corson. It, you know, I, I do not know the other two folks, yep. um, but Shane Corson is phenomenal. We, we had him on a few weeks ago. Right. That was one hell of a show talking about the stuff at Olympic. Um, right. But but I want to hear about some of the stuff, you know, you know, like some of the reports maybe you've taken or some of the experiences you've had and and, uh, you know, what's your approach to doing research? Well, um, I, I think when you grow up, I, I uh, you know, I had these idea of what was going out into the woods and look for Bigfoot, and never really pay attention. Finding Bigfoot uh, with uh, Matt and Cliff, Bobo and and Renee, I mean, that was really what got me started as an adult back in. I had my kids almost grown out of the house and watching the episodes, and then a buddy of mine, uh, Jason, uh, we worked together, and we found out that you could go on a BFRO expedition. So we went, we went down to West Virginia and uh, 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 Dr. Jones, uh, Russ uh, was putting it on with Darren and we had a, bl we had a blast. It was, it was phenomenal. Uh, it was one of the funnest things I'd done, even to a point where the next year we went back. 
And I think after that, I was kind of hooked. I uh, started going to library talks and, and the Ohio Bigfoot Conference and started meeting some people. And one of the people that kind of uh, put me under his wing was Mark Mazel from the uh, Ohio uh, BFRO. And uh, it's just, uh, I just remember one time getting a text from him saying, hey, are you interested in going this weekend to Salt Fork with a group of us to go look for Bigfoot? I was like, oh, yeah, I'm there. So we had a phenomenal time and just kind of edged into it after, you know, going to a bunch of uh, expeditions. Um, finally, uh, they, uh, I, got, I got to be asked to be brought part of the BFRO. And I, I thought that was a really uh, a fun honor uh, with the Finding Bigfoot shows going. Uh, I got to meet the cast at one of the um, uh, town halls and just started working on reading books getting uh, up to date on information, reading Don Keating's books, um, uh, Robert Morgan's uh, book, I really love. And uh, being a physical therapist, Dr. Meldrum's book, I, I actually speak that language. So uh, to uh, read some, get to the foundation uh, and then start looking at my area. And I live in Coshocton. Uh, one of the, uh, Co uh, my address is actually Conesville, which is one of the uh, points of the, uh, Sasquatch Triangle. Don corrected his Salt Fork, New Cumberstown, and Conesville. That's where he did a lot of his research. And I wanted to be, I wanted to know that area. And so going out in the woods, and uh, I think one year or two years ago, I wanted to spend 100 hours in the woods, and I kept track of that and, and actually got out and, and found areas that I felt had the potential for Squatch. Um, after a while, uh, you, you get... Um, uh, you get to meet friends, start networking, um, learning new challenges. Uh, because I'm a, a physical therapist, I was just kind of gravitated towards uh, casting and learning how to cast. I mean, I remember getting a box of HydroCal and going out and mixing it and, and just casting deer prints and, and dog prints and, and even birds and ducks and uh, getting to a point where I would go out in, in the rain and, and cast in the rain just so I could tr do it. And uh, so I felt pretty comfortable with my skills in that. Um, uh, the reports, uh, they come and go depending on uh, what your uh, group is or what your situation is. Uh, after a while, I did leave the BFRO. Uh, I found that uh, I wanted to do more of my local uh, area. And uh, so I you know, hooked up with some other groups. I'm currently at the uh, Coshocton County Bigfoot uh, group with uh, Jay Fouch and a bunch of other good guys. Uh, we go out in the Woodbury, which is 22,000 acres of uh, public land, hunting, fishing land that's reclaimed uh, uh, coal mines, coal land uh, that the ODNR uh, runs. And it, it's absolutely amazing out there. And then I have Salt Fork as a, as a backup uh, just down the road. Yep. Um, and we have a, we actually have a comment that, David ran a, a wonderful BFRO expedition a few years ago, very professional and forum. And welcome, Laurie. Hey, Laurie. Uh, Thanks, Laurie. Um, a, a little little note with Laurie. Uh, she, uh, we uh, occasionally was, we have our investment in Salt Fork. There is, it's one of the few parks where uh, you can go and the rangers aren't going to harass you about what you're doing late at night at two o'clock in the morning running the trails. Uh, the rangers will actually will, will share information of what they've heard or what a camper have reported to them. And they, they watch out for you because they know that we're there for the best reason we, and, uh, to keep the park going. And, and we clean the park and protect it as much as we can. Um, but uh, Lori went what we used to do uh, a Bigfoot hikes for the uh, John Hickenbottom and the naturalist at Salt Fork. And I, 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 can't realize how amazing that is is that the state park there has embraced it and they're they're actually helpful to legitimate researchers yeah oh it, it, it's totally amazing and i think there, it's it's a symbolic um the a lot of the uh, groups are very respectful and uh i'm gonna say supportive of the park with all the camp outs and uh spending the money at doing the uh, you know camping at the lots and eating at the restaurants and stuff um, but, uh, we had a, a Bigfoot hike, uh, that was the Jesse and Alan started and we just kind of group of group of us, you know, kept it going, uh, where the, the naturals, he said, I go take a, uh, 
a group down and say we're going to look at owls. I might have you know five, ten people show. Up. He says I literally I would announce that we're doing a Bigfoot hike with actual researchers in the park, and and I'm not I'm not uh, exaggerating the numbers. We've had over 300 people show up. We had to break them up into 100 100 lots, and we'd have maybe eight re, eight to ten researchers there helping out. And we just basically take them down a trail. We'd introduce them to some of our equipment, some of the philosophies or our best understanding. Uh, there's no experts in Bigfoot, but I think we just shared our experiences and our knowledge that we've been out in the field. We let the kids howl and, and hit, do tree knocks. And then we get down to the one end and Walter Tippy, a friend of ours, had a sighting down at the end of this one trail. And we would tell the, the story. And by then it would get nice and dark. And then we'd start heading back. And what's really funny is that one out of every maybe five uh, hikes that we would do, something would happen. There would be a howl back or a tree knock back. And, and the dad would come over and say, hey, that's pretty good. You got someone down in the woods there? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. Because then it becomes we would like to go research that or find out what's going on. But we're also responsible trying to get these people back out of the woods and back to the cruise. And uh, we're like, okay, let's, let's go ahead and start uh, walking a little faster now. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and it got to a point where John, at first, uh, the naturalist was not a big fan of Bigfoot. It was like, you know, I, I, I'm appreciative of your guys' uh, help because it, it helps the park. But now, after a few times and a few experiences of his own now, um, he's been a very uh, supportive and very knowledgeable um, naturalist and he's he's done his homework we well, have yet another comment this is you know from brian uh Dywert, and welcome brian to the show um said confirm david to be our four expedition a few years ago was magnificent well organized yet flexible at the same time so uh, hey. we put a lot of work into that and, and I, <coughs> we try to defend it. I, even though i'm not in the bfro now uh, i do defend uh the expeditions and there's a lot of great researchers are in there in that organization. It just wasn't for me at the time, at the time now. Um, but, uh, the expeditions, at least I hold to, uh, I was responsible. There was, there was money being paid and I wasn't there to sh have them a sh show, but I was there to educate and entertain. And I wanted to make sure their minutes, their time that they gave me, that it was very valuable, uh, that I was able to return a good memory and they came away with some skills. You know, uh, you, you know, one of the expeditions I run is the puppet show. No, I'm I'm wrong, wrong. <laughs> um, every every expedition's got to have a puppet show. You know, marionette. No, just uh, I got to ask. Um, you know, with you being a um, you know, a, a physical therapist, you know, how does that your knowledge of anatomy, especially looking at a Sasquatch track, uh, does that give you any more insight on how they walk or, you know? Well, I, I think that you, yeah, I know human uh, anatomy really well and human gait. So when I go out in the field and I have friends who send me pictures or we locate uh, footprints, uh, I, I have the, I think the ability to, to clarify if I really think it's a human footprint. Uh, then mm -hmm. if it's a, in a gray area, then we start looking at stride length and, and weight and the width of the heel. Uh, is there any uh, mid tarsal break? Uh, is there any toes that are flailing out? Um, and everybody's going to go, well, usually usually only find one. Well, I really think people don't take the time and investigate where the other footprints possibly are. Uh, I usually put a stick down beside the one footprint. Uh, when Brian was on, he was one of the guys that was out with us at Salt Fork. And, and it was raining when we was looking at a track. And uh, you, you take the tape measures out. Uh, I'm look, looking for, I take it out about six to seven feet from the footprint that I found. And I kind of do an arc and I say, where would be the next step it's at six yeah. foot? And then even though I don't find something, I put a stick there in the ground and I go six or seven feet away from there, trying to look at an angle or the general vicinity that it was going and go for another, you know, go for 12 feet out and look around for another footprint. I, I, I have found probably three tracks where I've been able to find mo multiple footprints just because I took the time of investigating the stride length of being around six, six foot. Yeah. Yep. 
And that's real. That that's really funny because I I have uh, one track line I found actually was going uphill at quite a steep angle, and it made six feet in three steps going up a hill. And you know, at at probably like a a twenty five degree grade or greater, maybe twenty five mm-hmm. to thirty, and it right up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now. That's Would you ex- is, is the way to go to yeah I, I like that because once you determine the, the approximate stride and you can't really spot the next track you just lay your stick down and start looking in the arc you're well, gonna I, find it yeah that's Once why i like my keeson rod that's why i like my keeson rod <laughs> yeah you, yeah you start you take that keeson well, rod put it out to the distance and start looking that's the thing <laughs> see you know a, a key a, 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 a nice uh um i don't know a cedar walking stick is a poor man's keeson rod. <laughs> uh, actually, a, a keeson rod is a poor I, man's I got a, a walking stick that I use now, and uh, it's not because I, I'm old. It's just because it has so many <laughs> I'd probably use it because I'm old. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> But I'm, I'm probably going to have to loan mine out to Ron Bowles when we get out to Kentucky. Oh, is he on? Oh, he I will be there. I'm, hey, I'm signed up for that expedition, so I'll see you then. Good deal. Oh, excellent. You're coming down to Kentucky with Charlie Raymond? Yeah, I've, I've actually been on like four of Charlie's uh, expeditions, and he runs a phenomenal uh, job. It, you know, when I'm looking at what I did uh, for mine as a host, uh, I definitely was looking at some of the things that he does and uh, and, and, and adding to it. But uh, I love Kentucky. Kentucky has been a great research yep. uh, state. Uh, I've been to two places, which I cannot tell you why, because I signed a, a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> um, but uh, the two places uh, were, were phenomenal, and I, I treasured those. Hold on. Uh, Tack said, <clears throat> that's why I started carrying cloth tape. I thought you could <clears throat> fall down and rip your pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know cloth tape. Like okay, here, here we go. Tom Steenberg has a great question: Are footprints in Ohio the same as reported in like British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest of the U.S., or have you come across differences? Um, I, I think question. there there's variety as you would look at uh, in human feet. If you went to a basketball game and kind of in a weird way ask everyone to take off their shoes and. And, and show their feet, you would come down with a, a plethora of all kinds of, of sizes and widths and abnormities. Um, the other part, you know, as a physical therapist, we're dealing with gout and Charcot's foot and neuropathy and collapsed arches. Uh, so there's all kinds of uh, abnormalities, even in the human foot. So uh, basically what I'm looking at is uh, looking for is a wide heel, uh, four feet, four inches greater, uh, five to six uh, at the metatarsals and trying to check and see if there's a, a metatarsal break. And sometimes there isn't. And then look for toes. And is the toes flailed out or are they uh, condensed? Um how did the heel hit? Uh, I'm looking at, uh, you know, a normal human being is, is uh, strikes with the heel and goes over on a right, lateral side and then pushes off with this great toe. Uh, what kind of, what, what did that foot look like when it hit? Um, Cliff always says that, you know, the footprint is not the shape of the foot, but it's the, it's the damage that the foot or the creature did to the, to the ground. And I, and I, and I wholly uh, 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 um, enjoy that as a understanding of the footprint. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now I have a I have a real good question too, and it's one of my my things I talk about a lot is that you know every once in a while eh, there's this trackway that I I'm highly dubious of because every every step is like one in front of the other, mm-hmm. and, and I find that kind of like a weird type of walking pattern. Um, you know, when we walk, I would think that you know we would have a left right delineation. Um, what says you? I mean. Um, the one track, the, the, the best one that I had, uh, if I had to draw a line, I think it was right on the line uh, if, uh, with uh, taking my first step, my first uh, print that I found and going out and find two other prints uh, out in the cadence. And if I had a yarn, a, a string, it, it would have just, it would have walked on the yarn. I mean, it was a tightrope act. It's kind of weird. Hmm. 
Uh, maybe it's because of the length of their gait, perhaps. But well, you know, I've I've only found one really good. Oh, and, and they're less. They're they're le they're because they're so big. They're less. Uh, the subject has to get through the woods, so they become smaller at the bottom, so that they're they're able to track, and everything you know, their upper body just bounces everything else off or pushes it to the side. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I found one good trackway in Kentucky that I was able to follow and, until I lost it. Uh, and they weren't in line. That's the only thing. The only difference, and I've seen so many people and so many trackways, photos of them that show in line, you know, but that's not what I've seen in Kentucky. And it might have just been that creature. I don't know. Uh, yeah. But it's interesting. Yeah. Tom asks, five toes normally are like the American three toes found in Ohio. Well, uh, we actually did uh, the uh, Coshocton Bigfoot group. Uh, Jay is is one of our founders, and he's out all the time. And he sent me a picture of a three-toed. And I had just by Quintus read something from Don Keating's, uh, one of his books, that he had uh, casted a three-toed print. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So we went up there, and uh, I'm trying to teach these guys to, like, you know, use your phone for compassing and, GPS and take a picture so you can get back to the same spot. And he said, well, I know where it's at. I know where it's at. Well, it rained. And when we got up there, it didn't look the same. So he couldn't find the footprint. And I was very disappointed. So, but uh, yes, probably within the last year, we, I had a picture of the, uh, he had a picture of the three toed print and it got me so excited, but uh, there has been three toed prints in Kishilton. Wow. Very now, cool. now in looking at, I mean, in looking at those, is it possible that it's uh, you know lost toes, amputated toes, or? Well, I think you know gangrene or uh, hunter's traps. If it's walking uh, down the streams and, and everybody's like you know follow the water. So if you're a bigfoot and you're walking down a stream and you're kind of uh, you know doing your thing and you got a trapper line down through there, it's got a bunch of coney bears or or uh, uh, traps in the, in there for muskrat and whatnot. There or might be a possibility of something uh, injuring it, and it maybe not that necessary that the trap itself causing it, but if it got infected and then just self amputated. Now, now, can you see a snapping turtle taking a toe of us? <laughs> Ooh. 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 The neighbor, the neighbor, used to do the 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 uh, the new, uh, say noodling of the turtles. He used to go down in the banks and reached in and pull out the turtles and throw them on the, on the, uh, on the shore. And, uh, oh, two times oh. he had to get his, uh, thumb reattached to his hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, you know, it's funny. I remember, uh, in this area of, of Texas, uh, uh, Eastern Texas, where there was a lot of, uh, alleged Sasquatch activity. We had come across an area that had like, you know, 10 or 15, emptied out turtle shells and we found that very interesting they were just the shells like the whole thing had just been yanked out and eaten or whatever yeah now is that somebody just making turtle soup or i, I don't know but it was really weird that all, we had all this plethora of activity and um going on and uh let's go here hello edward good to see you brother and yeah uh, yeah, a lot of Native American tribes are documented as walking in a straight line style. Interesting. Sure. Interesting. Um, I would like to see it. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they do that so they can hide their number, right? Mm. You know. So who knows? You know. Think about it. You got a couple walking in line right behind another. They're just putting the same trail. Um, don't know. And I, I'm pretty sure chimpanzees do that too they walk in single file mm. as not to uh you know let anybody uh, know and if you ever watch them you know there's an amazing video that was out a few years ago about the you know showing how intelligent they are that there's one chimp that comes out and look and he'll kind of like look at the, the next one in line and when he gives them the look or whatever they all start walking across the street yeah yeah and uh that, that one will not leave until the last one goes mm. 
uh, very interesting stuff. But uh, you know, just you can see the intelligence of them crossing the road. And elephants are they're super intelligent. They do the same thing. In fact, it was kind of funny. You'd see the elephant actually looking both ways down the road, see if the road was clear. So, you know, uh, I well, say animals this. are pretty cool. You know, a cattle will follow a single path through a pasture. And it makes like the neatest little walking trail about, you know, 12 inches wide. There will be no grass there, but on each side of the cow path, grass. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's something that they do naturally. I guess they preserve their uh, pasture. I don't know. But it's interesting. Hmm. So um, there was a, just a couple of weeks ago, I think I talked to you guys before the show, uh, there was a... Um, uh, two guys that I had uh, talked to, uh, they had uh, shared an encounter in Licking County. Um, it was really interesting. Uh, the two guys um, uh, were old hunters, uh, very uh, uh, outdoorsmen, and uh, the the area that they saw the uh, the crossing was um, interesting because it's it's near the Dawes Arboretum, which is a a uh, nature preserve where I think it was like after the Civil War, the, the Dawes uh, gentleman was giving some land to uh, try out to figure out what kind of uh, foliage trees would be able to, you know, be planted and, and full and grow quickly to, you know, replenish the uh, effects from the Civil War and all the battles. And um, so I, when I went and took uh, my friend Jay and uh, Shane there, we uh, met the guys. And they reported that uh, it was after uh, 4th of July, one of the gentlemen was um, uh, not feeling good. So he went to the hospital and did, they wouldn't let him drive home. So the, the other buddy came and picked him up and they were coming back home. And going across this uh, cornfield uh, road, uh, coming back, they, uh, the headlights at 2 o'clock in the morning and the headlights uh, hit uh, a large figure uh, that was standing in the middle of the road and they slowed down and they uh, it took a step up into the cornfield and they were excited and scared. And so they kind of backed up a little bit, had their headlights kind of follow it in the cornfield. And it went about uh, 60 yards into the field and just then kind of did a peekaboo, just kind of squatted down and looked at him and squatted down and looked at him again. And after a while, they just their nerve just kind of uh, uh, took got the best of them. They finally took off. But they said they had white eyes, they had white shining eyes and um uh, it was really interesting just because of this the, the when we got there we actually went to the site and the corn had been you know already harvested and it, this happened in 2019 um but uh i took a, i have a uh, a stick that uh a pvc pipe that i every foot i put black tape and every six inches i uh, the six inches i put uh, uh pink tape and I use that when I have witnesses to kind of have them be able to maybe put in uh, a, a size to it. And uh, both of them kind of hit the right size or same size as about uh, between eight, eight and a half feet tall from where I had the pole at, from where they said their, their car was. And it was interesting. Some of the things that, you know, I don't tell them while I'm doing that, but uh, you know, they said they saw it in the middle of the, the uh, road and I measured the road and the road was uh, uh, 17 feet across. And they said it took one step to the edge and then one step up a small bankment and was in the cornfield. So that kind of made a little sense. Um, they were really good about the details. I tried to shake them a little bit, gave them, you know, the, they had given me some information about the details, the hair color and such, and try to change it on them, just see if they was going with the punches. And no, neither one of them was going to, was going to, uh, you know, change their story. Um, the Dawes, like I said, is right by there, uh, during the day people go in there and it's a uh, nature preserve, but uh, at night it's close to the public. And so I, I, you know, there's lots of, um, tree shrubs, uh, different orchards in, in that, in that, around that area, pond water. Uh, so it was just kind of interesting. Um, the other part that uh, we talked about was, uh, after a day or two, they decided they were going to go run up and talk to their, um, a family member uh, on up the road and that family member said that uh, she'd do one better. She had heard some howling and had lived in that area for all her life and never heard anything like this. She heard some howls coming from the dolls. And so when I was up there, I was, we were checking things out and getting her story. 
and uh, I played some different uh, uh, Ohio uh, Bigfoot sounds like, um, oh, I had some Sierra sounds. I played, nah, that's not it. And uh, Moneymaker's uh, Ohio How, and nah, that's not it. Um, some friends of mine, uh, Mike and Mike from the Ohio Night Stalkers, played some of their stuff. Nah, that's not it. But uh, the guy who was with me for the uh, BFRO ex expedition to help me host, uh, Charlie Page, he had uh, uh, captured a howl that was very similar to the uh, Ohio howl in 2015. And I played that to her for her, and her eyes got really big, and mm -hmm. the hair actually on, on her arm stood up. And I'm watching, this is autonomic. This is not, you know, I can't, she can't fake that. She, she's like, oh my God, I got goosebumps. She says, that's it. That's exactly what I heard. She says, that's, that's scary. She says, is wh wh where's that from? You know, I said, what's well, from Ohio? And uh, so uh, she was just, uh, it, it really shook her. Um, she's like, I, I haven't heard anything like that. I'll never forget it. So it's really going to be a, a, um, a further forgoing uh, um, investigation. We got some people in that area that do other research in that area. So we're going to try to get back with them and uh, get some more details. Interesting. You know, I, I always uh, had a hard time, uh, you know, and, and I don't discount the story, but I have a hard time with the Sierra sounds because, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff, nobody's ever heard again. Mm. And I, I'm just trying to, to uh, share uh, yeah. I guess the information I had because I had all oh, the other thing I had. There's a there's a uh, I don't know. It's on the Internet. There's a like 16 different uh, portraits of Bigfoot that people have uh, put together. Yeah. And I kind of had the guys look at him separately. And I said, give me your best two. And uh, all of them, uh, each of them chose one that was different, but they both chose one that was the same. And they said it kind of looked like this one or this one. And so, I, you know, it was just kind of allowing to have more information about this report. And I wish I would have been able to separate them a little bit more and got more individual stories to see if they would have uh jived together but uh it was kind of cold and we were out there traffic was driving by we got measuring tapes all the way down and poles sticking out i think they would thought we were surveyors or something um <laughs> but it was a fun time it was definitely a fun time well david i was wondering have you had a sighting uh yourself yet or are you still waiting um I guess uh, I haven't had a, a class A sighting. Um, the closest I've been was uh, there was um, uh, Brent Sipley, I think, was doing a BFRO expedition uh, down in yeah. Kentucky. And I went there. And because I was uh, an investigator, we went down early to kind of get the idea of the trails and, and be able to have some bearing on when we was taking groups out. And yeah. we were talking, we just kind of hitting this trail, and we wasn't really thinking about anything. We were just. Uh, you know, in the landscape and we right. went around a bend and, uh, ahead of me by about, uh, 75 uh, feet, I saw big red eyes and uh, I have a Knox, uh, headlamp, which is really bright on top. I mean, it's like yeah. a little sun. So I, yeah. I, I can't say at the, they can't add anything to the, 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 uh, conspiracy or the argument of debate of whether it was glowing before or whatever, but uh, I hit, and there was two uh, eyeballs that were the size of ping pong balls, and it yeah. looked at me and then turned away. And I stopped, and I was like, "I shine, I shine." <laughs> <And> we, <laughs> we started yeah. getting our spears out and everything. But by the time we got uh, situated, it was gone. That that, that definitely okay. made me swallow my 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 uh, own tongue with that. Um, the other thing is in my research area, uh, I had a. Um, I forget Ron Ron's asking. He, yeah. Ron's asking if he was at that expedition. Um, I, I have some questions stacked up. All right. Um, so the, the question number one is some tack has, uh, Dave compared all of those sounds visually, uh, to look for commonality. Uh, my, uh, I'm not the, um, audio is, I know enough to be dangerous. Uh, I do have the audacity, uh, aud audacity, yeah, Odyssey. Audacity, yeah. Yeah, on my computer. And I have, uh, when I was doing the uh, expedition, pre preparing for the expedition, Charlie Page was really our audio guy, and he's phenomenal. Um, but we had uh, LDRs in various spots of Woodbury 
trying to capture knocks and, and uh, information. And it takes me all night to go through uh, the, the week or so that we would get. Charlie would go through a whole week in one night. So uh, mm. I, I, am, I am just dangerous enough. Uh, I do like the idea of putting on a spectrograph and being able to, uh, seeing the wave and trying to differentiate uh, what is known sound. Um, yeah, now Ron's asking what year was that? I'm going to say 15 or 2015 or 2016. It was back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> but um, right now, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Dave Webster, is really starting off on doing some really good stuff in Indiana. I want to give him a little uh, tip of the hat because he, he's uh, learning from the ground up. And it's really good that the other Bigfoot researchers like uh, Charles Kimbrough and Charlie Page and Mahanga Hala and other guys that I have – uh, utmost respect for their they're helping uh, him out and uh so uh audio is not my strong suit but i know enough to be dangerous and laurie did make a comment that mark mazel has caught captured similar sounds very similar sierra sounds oh. over southeastern ohio so that's yeah. good to know yeah. i mean that makes me feel a little bit better than somebody actually has um, a story about that uh it's actually in his book uh ron's book and uh there's a section in that area that uh, that has the Ohio uh, sound, and Mark Mazel got it on one of his expeditions, and he included it in the book, and it's on the CD. If you get, if you listen to the uh, the the, uh, the um, uh, listen to the CD for the Sierra sounds, and what was funny was Mark would always tell the story about how uh, uh, Ron called him out at one of the conferences and said, "Hey, the guy back there is the guy," and and uh, <laughs> uh, had some words before that because Ron thought he had uh, copied or plagiarized or played it backwards or whatever and actually had some not nice conversation with him. And oh, maybe, you know, we got that uh, on, our, um, uh, on our expedition, so go pound sand. And I went out to Beachfoot with uh, Todd's uh, group, and, and Ron was out there. And I said, oh, by the way, I'm a friend of Mark Basil's. And he kind of snickered and laughed. And he said, did he tell you that he told me to pound sand? I said, yep. He told you to tell you that, yep. <laughs> he, he says, so, uh, So yeah, if you uh, read the book, it's a small paragraph, and it's, it's also included in his CDs. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so, apparently, Fred Clark got, got some samurai chatter in Colorado, apparently, too. Uh, question was, how many people normally go on uh, the BFRO expeditions? Well, I, I think uh, you, you talk to uh, the first, you kind of put in your hat of whether you're interested or not. We hadn't had a Ohio expedition for a long time. And uh, I think I talked to Charlie and we said we could try to do that because we wanted to bring um, bring Ohio back on the map of the of de doing a, a, a decent uh, expedition. Um, I think we had like 16, 20 yeah. people maybe. And then I had a whole, I had a whole bunch of uh, Ron's piping and says it varies. Yeah, and I had a whole bunch of uh, help from. I, I mean, the word got out. Charlie called his BFRO buddies. I had some of my BFRO buddies. We had a, a good uh, uh, tangent from Ohio, and uh, so we had like two to three uh, investigators for every group that went out. It was really awesome. I was very appreciative. You know, it, it's. Um... It's amazing the the camaraderie you get uh, when you get a group of people together, no matter you know under what circumstance you know the dynamic. Um, you know, I, I remember the the camaraderie amongst several people that were uh, e occurred even through a failed Bigfoot expedition, and they were all mad at the expedition organizers because they had taken their money, and the the camaraderie amongst them was wonderful and and still the the love of doing bigfoot research and i i think that's what kind of binds us all i think when everybody's in a gaggle together normally it goes fairly smoothly no matter where where you fall on the spectrum um you know uh, where it falls on the spectrum it doesn't matter you're all together trying to solve the mystery um you know, and, and that's the, uh, I, I, you know, uh, and th th this, we have had a lot of, you know, lines drawn down over the past, you know, several years, you know, between 
what they call the woo and the, the people that believe Bigfoot's alien and, you know, the, the, the cloakers, the, the portal jumpers, the, the stuff like that. And at the end of the day, you know, if, if you legitimately believe that, then that's your belief. Um, and I may not subscribe to one particular field of thought or any, or I may have some explanations for things, but at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to solve the mystery. Yeah. And, you know, I haven't been, I haven't been one to say, okay, let's all sit in a circle and try to mind speak to a Bigfoot. But, well, I, I always tell people like this, I, I like to be open minded and let people, um, uh, do their, um, do their own thing. But, uh, uh well, I'm, I'm flesh and blood in my research, uh, abilities. Uh, as a physical therapist, I am going to be contributing to the group because I can cast footprints. I've done a footprint in the rain, snow, a mud puddle. Uh, I've actually uh, um, had some fun doing that uh, expanding foam, trying to mess with that to learn a little bit about that. Um, it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been fun. There's been uh, there's a, there's a technique, and there's a certain you know you don't go with the cheap stuff. You go with the more expensive stuff, and it comes out decent. It's easier to carry. If you do a good print, um, and it's lighter, I mean, you don't have to carry hydrocow in a bunch of water and hydrocow or your print back out. It's it, once it's solid, it's solid. You throw in the backpack and go. Hmm. But uh, I got friends who who uh, uh, you know do the um, paranormal stuff, and uh, it's it's nice that when they have a footprint, they call me for advice, and that and I and I, I can't uh, can't say enough about that that they respect me enough that they feel comfortable with saying, Hey, we was out and we found these footprints and I try to educate them about measurements, putting a dollar bill beside it for reference. Give me some pictures of the heel. Tell me what's going on. So I'm trying to educate them from, from my angle, from my strengths. Yeah. Uh, okay. So tax said, you know, Steve gets rocks thrown at me when we go out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that that the that night, I, the rock throne I had, and it was near my house, and it was a choke point for where a lot of turkeys do some scratching. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was a bird or a squirrel at one point, and it was about the size of a, a potato. And it, when it hit, I still was thinking that it was going to roll away and run, and it didn't. It was just a rock, and I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> I, I'm not in a good good place right now. <laughs> no. Better go." Um. You know, Terry, I agree. You can't prove mind speak. Um, uh, and uh, Ron says that's exactly what we're going to do with the in Kentucky. Steve, you bring the crystals, and I'll make the tinfoil hats. All right, Ron. <laughs> we will. We shall sit. In, we right. shall sit at the edge of the forest and chant. Well, uh, David, I had a question. You know, I was look, looking at a map of a salt fork and uh, a few minutes, I brought it back up a few minutes ago to re-reference it. But, um, you know, the salt fork Lake makes like a big C through the whole park. Uh, do you think these creatures are water friendly or do you think they tend to, I mean, uh, as far as when it comes to crossing water, do you think they tend to cross that Lake or you think they walk think, all around? Uh, yeah. Uh, up by Hozak's cave, there was an old report of one crossing a small area of the Lake there. And uh, I had a, I, I'm not, um, I'm say, I, I got to a point where I'm not scared anymore of just talking or sharing with people that I look for Bigfoot. I think there's a time and a place, definitely, but I, I don't shy away from it. And someone who um, was out there uh, does a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, boating on platoons. Um, they, uh, they said there was one creek area that they never go up into because they've always had like wild howls and, and uh, stomping up in that area. And I forget what they call it. Like it was like crazy cove or, or kooky cove or something like that. They just said, we don't go up there. We don't uh, uh, throw our anchor up in there at all. And even the high school sons was like a little antsy about not going that way. And kooky that's, cove. Was, that's the nickname for Soha or <laughs> Soho. <laughs> Oh, the Pacific I, I think I think there's uh, I think they're definitely connected to the water. Um, so let me uh, let me make a quick. Uh, there are some some questions uh, in the YouTube uh, portion of the chat, 
and uh, you know uh david is no longer part of the bfro so he doesn't run expeditions for them um i think that if we have ron on maybe those questions should be addressed to somebody that's actively and more involved with running expeditions um because there, there there's been some questions like uh and what they're trying to allude to is the big money making scheme um you know, uh, you know, and I'll just say, say it is what it is. What they're saying is they were like, well, where does all this money go? And, you well, know, I can, I can tell you that, uh, you know, I kept receipts of all the, uh, uh, travel meals. Um, uh, I rented out, uh, my, the speakers that were there, I paid for their camping areas. Uh, I fed, uh, I took the money and, uh, support a local, um, um, uh, I want to say a food cart and brought food for these guys to, to eat, uh, showed, uh, some video, uh, made sure that, uh, there was lots of inner, uh, activities and you could participate if you wanted to or not. Um, so I, I, you know, I know I was sweating. My friends knew that I was nervous as heck to get this expedition over with, mm-hmm. uh, cause I felt it was a, a big responsibility of putting on a learning, fun and hopefully we get some kind of action and i took it very much to heart so, yeah, I don't so know other people you're feeding need. people yeah you're, you're taking care of speaker costs yeah so it's pretty much like a, a speaking engagement with a little fun in the field yeah i think the only thing i got to keep out of the whole deal i got me a brand new pair of muck boots yeah. <laughs> that was that was after i paid off everything uh i had a nice uh, hundred dollar pair of muck boots that i normally would have would have spent the money for Gotcha. Yeah. You're not going to get rich uh, putting on expeditions. <laughs> no. Unless your name is Todd Standing where you're charging $3,000 for an oh. expedition or 1500 I actually uh, have this uh, firefighter that's out in Arizona, a retired firefighter who was fire captain, who kind of got all excited about this and, you know, uh, Standing charged him three grand to go out there. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't... <laughs> Really a well-run thing, according to him, and a uh, very interesting story. We will have him on a future date on the show, but now is not the time for that. Um, so uh, a couple other things. Uh, uh, Terry says, I love going on Ron's expeditions. Um, yeah, and uh, Ken says, I've done plenty of town halls with, with Matt Moneymaker and the call of Dennis Fall, and it is expensive. So, you, yeah. you know, it, it, stuff costs money. And, uh, here's what it is. You got to pay your people to, you know, you got to take care of their gas costs and all the, the other stuff. And, you know, if you have speakers in, if they're coming in, you got to take care of them that way. So, uh, tech likes to say, are there any special minerals in salt fork that might draw animals or Bigfoot into it? Like a salt lick or digestive clay or, uh, uh, I, I don't know about, I wouldn't say that there might be a possibility of that at Salt Fork, but definitely in Woodbury, we find different uh, opportunities like that because, again, it was an old uh, mining company, uh, mining shaft. So uh, there's lots of uh, different uh, coloration sometimes for the water. Um, and uh, I, I would think that the, the Woodbury and some of the clays that we have, that uh, that would be something that they would be interested in. Gotcha. Um, the other part, I know, uh, maybe not the, the whole diet, but uh, Coshocton County is number one in deer harvesting every year. So I forget how many, I think it was over 6,000 deer harvested through both um, shotgun and muzzleloader season. And I can tell you right now, I can probably catch probably five or six deer at my uh, salt lick tonight. Uh, it just, you don't, uh, that many deer in one county every year, and it doesn't even phase it. Well, if I had a salt lick at my house, by tomorrow at this time, it's probably going to be covered in another half a foot of snow at least. <laughs> so, Chris, be, feel yourself thankful. I know you in Ohio yeah. suffer my pains as well. Um, yeah, we're looking at getting uh, a ton of snow starting tomorrow afternoon or starting tomorrow late, late afternoon into Tuesday. And then we get smacked around again thursday into friday and the, the very interesting thing is is my my off days this week or wednesday thursday uh, that's so. the thing over the next couple of days we're supposed to have like you know a bunch of snow here but the bad thing is you know if it, we wake up in the morning and there's a foot of snow on by that afternoon it'll be gone you know when, when you guys get it it's there for forever, forever. <laughs> until june <laughs> um 
So, uh, actually, Ken has a question for Chris. Have you heard of any sightings around the Buckhorn State Park or the Daniel well, Boone State Forest? At, Ken, that's a long ways away from here. But, but we did have a member, former member now, Scott, that went there in the Daniel Boone National Forest checking out some stories and uh, of some sightings. And he did find a trackway, and he attempted to cast it, but the best track he could find to cast was on the like a 45 degree slope hillside. And so when he cast it, it, it broke out of the back of the hill and run down. So he said he ended up with a cast looked like a snake. <laughs> so it didn't, didn't work out too well, but he did find some tracks there. And uh, unfortunately that's like about two hours and 45 minutes away from me. So it's not really something I could drive to every day to check out, you know, and research. But uh, hey, good question. Hey, OT's in the house too, and he says, "I don't want to hear about snow or anything. It's negative thirty-three in the past two days." Eek. Oh wow! Okay. So, uh, Steve, with I think your uh, the uh, screen there is flashing. I just want to make sure I have uh, an opportunity to absolutely. Talk to about the, let's uh, let's let's talk about. <laughs> so let's okay. Well, rating. We've gone to we've gone to dark. Everybody still there? Yeah, I'm still there. All right. I don't know what happened there, but we had a failure of something. Uh oh. There we are. There you go. Thank you. So uh, from earlier, uh, with the idea of having a conference, uh, what I found was uh, the Ohio Bigfoot Conference is just down the road at Salt Fork, and uh, it has done it for a long time and I over and over again, it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, I, you know, read some of Don's old stuff and actually went to one of Don's meetings and uh, as an adult and his, his conferences were a little bit different and uh, we're just sitting around and people were coming in and, and it didn't either it was free at first. And then he started charging a little bit. Um, I, I, I wanted to have something here in Coshocton. Uh, so, uh, with Don kind of in the ropes, uh, with Shane, uh, I'm with, uh, talk with him monthly with, the uh, project zoo book. Amy Boo has that project zoo book where we have researchers and anthropologists, primatologists, um, uh, marine biologists, a whole bunch of uh, people, uh, getting together and talking Bigfoot, which is really, really amazing. And I kind of asked Shane, I said, Hey, um, if I was interested in putting on a conference, would you be would you would you be interested in coming? Because I, I really think his uh, the nest site and what they're doing at the Olympic project is amazing. And he just said, "Sure, Dave, yes, please." Because we we had met at Beachfoot and and we had uh, really struck a, a, a good friendship. And I was just amazed uh, that he was uh, having the opportunity to come out. And then uh, you know I looked around and said, "Okay, well I got these two guys that are really strong." And I wanted the theme to be uh, researchers that actually go out in the field, get their butts uh, uh, wet and their shoes muddy, and they uh, compile data and put it together and come up with uh, an idea or a summation of why. Why is Bigfoot there or why are we seeing these behaviors? And then they share it. They share the information. I think that's one of the biggest things that, that uh, some researchers don't do is they keep everything to themselves. And we need to share more of our knowledge that we gain by experience. And so uh, George is someone that I respect from Pennsylvania. He's done an amazing job of compiling all the information in Pennsylvania. And then Kane, I've met him a couple places and uh, he's kind of like a Renaissance man. He's down in Hawking Hills and he does a amazing Bigfoot research, goes out in the field for an extended time. And I'm very, very happy and proud to have these guys as my speaker lineup. Um, if I guess people, it's going to be coming up here. So a couple weeks after OBC. So if you haven't got your fill or you want to try something different, um, you just check us out on the Facebook page of the Sasquatch Triangle Conference and it'll lead you to the site to buy the tickets. Uh, excellent, we're hoping excellent. The uh, conference got to be on a Sunday. I'm trying something different. Um, what I found with other conferences, it was always on Saturday and Sunday, everybody just got up early and no one said goodbye. No one said, see you later. And it just, everybody took off at different places. So 
I want that to kind of be at the end of the conference. And so Saturday is for people to get together around uh, campfires. Uh, we're going to be uh, Lake Park is where it's at, a pavilion uh, that has a campground nearby. And we're going to be camping there. And with the COVID restrictions right now, uh, they're allowing only so many people per lot. Um, uh, we're trying to find our, uh, with Ohio, our current COVID uh, restrictions by the governor. Uh, we're limited to amount of people who can get into Lake Park. Uh, normally, they can hold uh, up to 500 people. And right now, we only have uh, up to 100. Uh, we're going to be social distancing and checking temperatures. Uh, making sure people uh, have a safe trip and enjoy the event and then hopefully get home and, and, and be safe going home. Uh, with me being a physical therapist, I currently am treating patients with COVID or just coming out of the hospital and coming out of quarantine. So this is very, very, very important to me. And I'll be following the guidelines uh, by the state uh, to make sure it's going to be a safe uh, event. Yeah, I, it sounds like it's going to be fun. Uh, did you say what the cost of the event was going to be? I kind of missed. Uh, Thirty dollars. Okay. Um, that's just getting yeah to the uh, inside the event. There's going to be some vendors there, but because of the uh, COVID and the restrictions of how many people we can have in the building, we have limited amount of uh, uh, vendors. It's not going to be vendor heavy, but there's going to be souvenirs for everybody. Um, we're looking at a uh, a event Saturday night where one of the local uh, restaurants that I'm friends with the owner. Uh, he has an outside patio and he's allowed us to have uh, at least half the patio and we're going to try and meet at a certain time and just, uh, uh, eat, uh, and hopefully the speakers will be available there. If people want to stop by and get pictures or, or talk to them about their encounters, uh, hopefully we'll have a good time there. Excellent. <clears throat> now, is this going to be something you're going to do every year or are you just running it for the test now? Uh, I'm well right now I set a goal of 60 tickets and I already have 80 tickets sold and I really haven't done anything local. Uh, I haven't, I got wow. uh, friends who are going to help me uh, get uh, on the radio, which I've done before for community theater and for other events. And I mean, I got a friend that wants to do a newspaper article, so I'm still reserving some uh, tickets for the, the, our local uh, uh, people in Coshocton. Um, but I've already met my goal, and I think it would be as long as we can get it pull it through uh, with the same high expectations that I did with my expedition. I I hope this is going to be a very successful event. Going with the uh, will I do it again? I definitely will. But I like to research. I like to get out in the in the field, and I yep. don't want to become a conference organizer. Yeah. Uh, I want to be a guy who occasionally organizes a conference, and I, and that way I don't burn friends out. I don't you burn yourself people. out. Yeah. And burn myself out. I want to get out yeah. in the field and research. I want to grab that footprint or that how, you know, and yeah. uh, I think so that's a big I, reason why Eric Altman does the Pennsylvania Cam uh, Bigfoot camping adventure every couple of years yeah. uh, rather than every single year because you go nuts. So yeah. I, I want to do it again. And, uh, and, and, and the, I think the, the theme is what I'm going to be looking at. So, um, each year I'm going to try to dwell into a common theme of what the speakers can add, uh, to it. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Cool beans. I, I, and, uh, you have a URL of the Facebook group. Um, the Facebook or... group, the, 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 uh, Sasquatch triangle conference is for the, is for the conference. The uh, group that I'm in right now is the, uh, Coshocton County Bigfoot. Uh, they have a Facebook group. Um, I'm usually the guy that's the science guy that's kind of putting the facts and, and, uh, any good reports that we get on there just to write them up. Uh, the, the, again, from some of the experience that I had from the BFRO, uh, compiling the information and putting it in a fact, uh, a little storyline that, uh, differentiates, um, uh, you know, what the evidence showed. I try to put that in there. Um, but, uh, I, I really enjoy just getting out with different groups like Sauceby, uh, Doug Waller's group. They're kind of fun to hang out with. Um, uh, but uh, I like the individual researchers and uh, people um, like uh, Ed, uh, but uh, the Buckeye Bigfoot uh, research, uh, the correlation where he called me up uh, on an investigation uh, that he had. And it was a, it was a privilege for me to, to go up there and help him. And I have felt like, 
Uh, he wanted somebody he could trust and, you know, get into the field with him. So uh, when, when people share knowledge and share resources, I think it's going to be good for Bigfoot. Yeah. And hey, guess who showed up to the late to the party? <laughs> and Dave. Hey, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do we got to do a shout out to our regulars who have been here since almost day one and uh before we go uh robin uh rose are my good friend and robin i've known god for i want to say at least 15 16 years so it's been a while um he want he wanted to write one last note on hoaxing the hoax is the very absence of the truth all also hoaxes regularly substitute claims for reality for imagination facts are formed acting if if artifice is the antithesis of the subject, the, in the this case is a mere tooth. <laughs> but but good point. Um, but anyway, we're getting close to the end, um, so um, we just uh, want to make sure uh, uh, we got that information out. And uh, you know, obviously, you you've kind of laid out what you're doing. Uh, anything hot you're following up on, or you know, just a. a I, I, I think right now, um, I think everybody should challenge themselves as a researcher to uh, develop new skills. I know my friend David Webster's, uh, you know, jumped uh, both feet into audio, and I kind of accepted that as a challenge. Um, uh, Ken Ger Gerhard uh, on Facebook posted about, you know, analysis of hair, and so I kind of took him up on it. I uh, sent him a private message, and he sent me some documents and some references to. Uh, hair, uh, 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 I want to say banks that you can research from universities. And I'm going to get a microscope out. And I think the group that I belong with, I said, let's start learning how to uh, analyze hair. Not that we and, have to be experts about it, and, but and, just like, just and, like uh, if someone gets a book and can go out in the field and identify trees from their leaves and their buds and their seeds and their bark, um, if we can start. Uh, increasing our knowledge in uh, what a, a hair from a dog, a canine, uh, a human looks like, then we can start looking at if we do get anything and, and also how to collect the evidence. You know, don't lick the, the envelope <laughs> and once yeah. you put the hair in there or, or signing off on the chain of, of, uh, of, of control. So if I collect something, I'm going to sign it. And then if I give it to somebody, I'm going to have that. There person. Goes. Yeah. Yep. So, um, and then on the back of it, uh, I had, you know, uh, start putting things like, where did you find it? Um, uh, where, uh, what time and stuff like that. And we're going to start trying to do our own uh, bank and get known samples of horses and dogs and, and uh, animals. And so we can start learning about that. So that's, that's one of my goals for next year is to get some basic knowledge of hair and analysts. And what I love is, and, and you think about this 20 years ago, uh, Good God, it's been over what, 22, 23, about 23 years ago I started this. Uh, back then, you know, you didn't have microscopes that you can plug into the computer. Mm -hmm. So now you can just put them the slide under there and you can look and then you can take a picture and boom, that picture is on the computer. Mm -hmm. I mean, what that does is, hey, you know what? Come here, pooch. And pull a hair on a pooch, put it under there, save that as a, a sample. Dog. You think about it, but then you can build your own bank yes. of hairs. You know, there's a dog hair, there's a cat hair. You know, uh, you know, the uh, the girlfriend's not looking. You know, pull a hair out of her head. Okay, there's a there's a human hair. <laughs> because you know what, David, I, I I don't have hair to pull out of my own head. So we're gonna uh, be doing lots of roadkill uh, and uh, uh, SS uh, uh, doing some roadkill uh, collection. I think that's a, that's a funny part. <laughs> smart, that that's a smart idea. What a weirdo! He's running over to that dead deer on the side of the road. What is he doing? <laughs> um, lunch. Yeah. <laughs> And Dave just said something that, or Ken just said something that, um, that made me chuckle. I put flour all over my truck. Oh. There's a joke there, but I'm not going to say it in the show. Uh, anyway. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're, we're wrapping up here. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, David, uh, after, after we end, stay on for one, for a minute. Yeah. I want to. I want to wrap real quickly after the show. Um, 
But I, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for coming on tonight. Uh, it's been awesome, awesome conversation. Learned a few things, which is always, you know, and of course our audience has the, uh, some of the greatest questions out very there. Questions. Very good, very, and, very good questions. You know, and we'll, we'll give Ron Bowles a pass. <laughs> um. <laughs> Looking forward to uh, seeing Ron again down in Kentucky. Yes. Um. So, and I look forward to seeing you in Kentucky as I do Ron. And, um, you know, unfortunately I heard, uh, you know, Suzanne Ferencheck was thinking of going, but looks like she's going to have to pass on that, which is too bad. I was looking forward to meeting her too. Um, but anywho, um, Chris, you want to, you want to do your thing? Well, I just want to, uh, thank David again for coming on. Uh, Dave, you've been a great guest. It's been an honor having you. Uh, I want to thank our, our listeners, man. I love you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, if you're a first time listener uh, on YouTube, please remember to hit the like, subscribe, share, uh, punch all those buttons for us because it helps us with the uh, <laughs> with the algorithm. Get a little help from my dogs. The little but, fellows uh, agreeing. But uh, again, thanks everybody. And uh, thank you, Tom. And thank you everybody for being here tonight. Thank you, David. Of course, as always, we will be here next Sunday night 9 p.m eastern uh for another rousing edition of squatch dtv and uh on behalf of us here we want to wish everybody a happy safe and uh blessed week um you know keep healthy folks god bless keep on squatching we'll catch you all here next week You've been watching Squatch DTV. Join us each week, Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, for the latest on the Bigfoot mystery. As always, we thank you for being our loyal viewers and encourage all to subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Steve Culls. As always, have a great week. Stay safe. God bless. And keep on squatching.